Today, Andy Bonhoff hit me up on Twitter asking me the question, is it possible to use graduated colors and symbols at the same time for a map layer? And I was like, yeah, you can do that. And here's how. So I thought I would make a video showing you how to do that. Thanks, Andy. Okay, here we are in ArcGIS Online. Oh my goodness, look at that. Is that an Elber's equal area map? Equal area being an incredibly important consideration for thematic mapping. Yes, Elber's equal area. I'll provide a link to this map in the description. Let's add some point data. I have something called a layer about social vulnerability provided by the CDC. I've converted it into a county centroids point layer. Here it is. So let's change the style and I'll choose a variable. I'll say um, overall percentile ranking. That's the social vulnerability data. Now I've just added one attribute to the symbology. And before I dive into actually making it readable, there's a little thing here called add attribute. And I'll add another one. So if I add two or more attributes to a single symbol for um, visual graphic encoding and communicating some data, that's called a bivariate map or a multivariate map if you want to do more than two. Um, but if you just use two, it's called a bivariate map because you're mapping two variables. Now, there's no reason I have to choose a different attribute. I can make the circles grow and change in color by the same attribute, which is social vulnerability. And if I do that, that's called redundant cues. So more than one visual encoding is used for the same data. So the same data showed two different ways, redundant, redundant cues. And studies show that people um, really pick up information well when you use redundant cues. So let's do that. So this is social vulnerability shown by size and color. So I'll get into the size options and I'll say um, the smallest is gonna be one and the biggest is going to be, let's bring it way down to eight, like 18. Okay, when in doubt, go small with graduated symbology because you can get a real issue with overlapping and occlusion really fast. Uh, let's go down to 14. Okay, so now I'm actually able to see patterns and make sense of this map because I'm bringing this down. I'll go down to 12. Uh, okay, so I'll say okay here and then I'll go to the colors. So smaller areas are less socially vulnerable in, an, in a hazard, and larger points are more so, so she, socially vulnerable. And let's apply the same rule to colors. So um, by default, it'll kind of pick uh, a nice range here. If you want to, you can expand this all the way to, to use the full gradient of the color range, or you can pick a different color range. ArcGIS Online comes with a lot of really nice predefined color ranges. I think I'm using this one. No, but I like this one better. Okay, so let's go with it. Now I'm using color and size to show one data attribute, which is social vulnerability. Now, I still have a problem with occlusion and overlapping symbols here. And that sort of sorts itself out as I zoom in. But if I'm making a map to be viewed at this scale, what can I do? Well, you can dig into these symbols a little bit and the fill you can make quite semi-transparent. And then the outline you can make, uh, in this case, I'm gonna choose a dark color because it contrasts with the light base map and I'll make it less semi-transparent. And we'll hit OK. So now I'm able to see the outside of the rings. I can see the color that's encoded in it, but because there's an opacity applied to it, I can see through to the heavily overlapped point features below and nearby. So there you go. Quick whiz bang primer on applying multiple attributes to 
one symbol, which is bivariate mapping, or the same attribute using two symbol methods, which is redundant queues.